Now, as you know, last week we launched our You Care, We Care campaign, um, specifically looking at the mental health of our NHS workers. Well, Dr Alex George is back again this morning. He's been showing us how he and his colleagues in A&E take a break from the front line. The COVID pandemic has put immense physical and mental pressures on frontline NHS staff, and the fear is that this will have effects for many months and years to come. You join me now in the wellness room, which is a small little space, but we've got a bean bag with a couple of chairs, an all important coffee machine, and some uh, lovely pictures that have been sent into staff behind there too. The wards, a &E, it's very clinical. The lighting is, is very white and very bright. So coming here to have a talk with a colleague, to take a few quiet moments, can make all the difference. So I'm now joined by Kevin Parks from the Chaplaincy Service and we're in the wellness room. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your day. How important are spaces like this for staff in these times? Yes, well they're vitally important and there are spaces in which staff can come out of the wards and clinical areas that they work in and they can decompress and do some of the debrief that they may need to do uh, emotionally. Whether they're staff, visitors, patients, whoever, uh, we're here for them whether they're religious or not. So I've now stood outside the recess room through those doors is red recess where all the patients with suspected coronavirus are being treated. Red zones are separated from green zones. Red zones are for patients with suspected coronavirus uh, and green zones are for those cases that are unrelated. The last few weeks and months have been exhausting for staff. They've had to put aside their own fears and worries to take care of their patients and do their very, very best for those who come to the hospital. In terms of staffing and the general morale, I feel like it's been really good. We've seen some really difficult things, some things that I think have upset a lot of us. People have been exceptionally brilliant. They have been brave. They have stepped up. A lot of the support comes from each other. Yeah, we do. I think we, that's one thing we're very lucky across the whole NHS. We pull together in times of difficulty. How have things been in the last few months in compared to you know, things you've seen throughout your career? Certainly a very unusual experience with COVID-19. Although we've learned quite a lot how to manage this, um, if it returns too swiftly, we are going to be in a very challenged situation again. We do not expect things to slow down because we're now dealing with the patients who may have feared coming to the hospital because of the COVID pandemic. But we are determined to help and treat those who need our input and need our care. The message we are sending is don't stay at home being sick unnecessarily. The NHS is there, the hospital is there, emergency department is there to look after you. So please do come. You have Dr. Alex around, they're going to be sorting you out. And I will be around <laughs> to see you. Well, Dr. Alex Jones is now from Hospital Newsham. So good to see you. Always good to see you. What I really got from that was, of course, you're exhausted physically and mentally, but the camaraderie is remarkable. You all keep each other going. Uh, good morning to you both. Lovely to speak to you again. And yeah, 100%. It's been uh, amazing how I think everyone's pulled together across the NHS, uh, different teams, different departments, the doctors, the nurses, the physios, occupational therapists, everyone has supported each other to get through what's a difficult time because ultimately we're in this together, right? Absolutely. And there was it was interesting though, though and, we, and Hilary and I have, have talked about this as well, the concern and the worry being that a new wave of patients will be, will be coming maybe in weeks, maybe in months. People not with COVID, but who have been too frightened to come to hospital. And I guess you've got to brace yourself for that. Absolutely. I've heard uh, Dr Hillary mention this uh, previously as well, that you know we're really concerned that we are, are having patients that stayed at home uh, who haven't come to hospital actually have needed our input, needed our care, that may well be needing our help now in the coming uh, weeks uh, and months. It's something that we're all a little bit anxious about, to be honest. You know, we, we know patients you know, have heart attacks, they have other illnesses, and yet we're not seeing that kind of numbers or those kind of numbers that we'd expect. And that, for me and for other you know, doctors, uh, is a real worry. No, it must be. We, we've talked about that. Yeah, we reckon we? about 25% of the deaths that are being recorded are indirect. They're not connected to COVID-19. They're because people with heart attacks, chest pain, abdominal pain mm -hmm. are staying at home. And we know that lots of orthopaedic operations have been postponed, meaning people are in pain right now. So it's not going to stop for these guys. And Alex and his colleagues are doing a just magnificent job. Yeah. And he's a good cameraman too, isn't he? Very good cameraman on his selfie stick. He's actually, actually he's another, <laughs> yet another skill. Yet another skill has been added. Now, we've talked about the camaraderie. We've We've talked about the fact that physically, I know physically you're exhausted and mentally too, and how important it is to look after your mental health. There's these wellness rooms. Tell me about that and how that helps. 
Well, actually, our wellness room is just um, inside our emergency department. It was actually pretty much a store cupboard before with uh, empty boxes and things like that in it. So it was emptied. Uh, we put a basic few couches and bean bags, a coffee machine in there, and created basically a space that's quiet. It's not clinical. The lights are low. It's just got a dimly lit lamp in there, and it's not... It's not meant to be a staff room or uh, anything like that. It's supposed to be a quiet room that you can go into and have reflection, uh, a moment of peace uh, with, with, uh, with um, a colleague or on your own. And I've had so many messages, actually, since last week, since the piece we did last week, um, saying from people they'd like to try this in their hospital. Mm. I'd love to have uh, your input from you both. Do you, do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it's something yeah, that we should Yeah, I, I would try? think so. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to see that in every single hospital. I know some, you know, there's some little pockets all over the country yeah. that they have that, because I know it, it makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like a little common room that you'd have anywhere, yeah, yeah. but you can somewhere you can go and be quiet or to mm -hmm. chat, or offload some of the... The, 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 the stuff that's going on in your head, getting away from a clinical setting um, and just being able to distance yourself for a moment from everything else that you're seeing right now. Yeah. Really important. And the NHS has is, is always neglected the, the, the health of its staff. You know, if we could only have a gym in each hospital and we could have a place like this where people can share their emotions, yeah. we'd have a healthier staff as well. You're right, and that's the most important thing. It really is. Dr Alex, I think we're going to start a campaign to get these all over the country because clearly they work. And you're right, I mean, you can, it doesn't take that much to turn a, a store cupboard into something of a little sanctuary, I guess. That's what it's like, isn't it? Yeah, I would absolutely be behind that. And I agree with Dr. what Dr. Hillary said there. You know, mental health is so, so important. I think more than ever now, this has become uh, an issue we're focusing on, you know, for frontline staff as well as the general community. And definitely, you only need a small space. That was a cupboard room. We can do this across hospitals, in hospitals across the UK. So let's get it started. And also, obviously, tonight, 8 o'clock, we're all going to be applauding the... the our Obviously, you know, you and all of the staff in the NHS, all of the carers, all of the frontline workers. And does it help? Does it really, really help? Definitely. I mean, it's a huge lift. Um, I mean, actually, I was on shift the other week and um, we popped out quickly to see, um, you know, the clapping and, and, and experience it. And, um, yeah, it, it kind of moved a lot of us, I think, to tears almost. It's an incredible thing. I think we couldn't do this without the support of the public and, you know, everyone at home who's, who's doing their bit. And it's just an incredible feeling to feel that coming together. That's what it's all about. That's all being one unit and one family. Absolutely. Thank you for well joining said, us again, Dr. Keep Alex. up the good work. You take care of yourself. You're very precious. Thank you. Take care both. Thank, Thank you. I'll talk to you real soon. Thank you so, so much.